So being joined by Monday Ubani, he's a, the former second vice president of the Nigerian Bar Association. Thank you for coming on board tonight. Yeah, thank you for having me. Good evening. Good evening. Let me first congratulate you on this unusual legal victory. Now, I use the word here unusual because many believe that an individual, now in this case, two of you have, uh, uh, you know, do you consider this as a major victory for transparency governance and the much talked about, you know, reduction in the cost of governance? That is actually what we set out to achieve and do uh, with the filing of that case in court. That case was filed in 2018 uh, by myself and my colleague, John, and we pursued it up to this point, you know, sponsored by, by myself personally. I didn't have any funding from any, any angle. Mm. And what actually prompted the suit was a revelation by Senator Shehu uh, Sani, mm -hmm. who revealed how much these people uh, were collecting or have been collecting. Uh, because there has been secrecy about the amount of uh, money they collect as salaries and allowances. They were not ready to reveal until uh, Senator uh, Sani did that. And when he did that, and there was no uh, refutal from the members of the House, I, I took it uh, that the Senator, distinguished Senator, was telling the truth. So what I did was to uh, get all the papers through which these revelations were made and then filed an action in court. And what did that ask the court to do? I wanted the court to look into the issue of uh, bogus salaries and allowances of the members of the National Assembly and decide whether they can fix those salaries and jumbo uh, allowances to themselves without the impute of the uh, revenue mobilization uh, uh, allocation and physical commission that is uh, constitutionally empowered to fix salaries and allowances for public office holders. Mm -hmm. And they were all joined. I joined that particular agency. I joined the National Assembly Service Commission. I joined the Speaker of the House of Federal House of Reps. I joined the President of the Senate and, of course, the Attorney General, who happens to be the Chief Law Officer. And they were all asked to come and give an explanation as to what is going on, especially with the jumbo pay allegation. And they, they all came uh, trying to bring a, a preliminary objection against my locals, that I have no locals to bring the action, that I have no cause of action, that my action is speculative and abuse of court process, all the manner of language they use. And so the court was very meticulous in examining all the points they raised. And that is Justice Obiozo, and he's a professor of law before he was called to the bench. And the, the judgment is something that is profound. He dismissed all those objections that they raised and then entered into the substantive matter. Mm -hmm. The only thing he disagreed with me was my reliance on the newspaper publication, which he said is not admissible. But uh, that's why he didn't make any order for reform, because all those allegations that were made, it would have been better if uh, Sani is the one that deposed to the affidavit and all that, I mean, being the deponent. But since he wasn't, my evidence was regarded as hearsay since he was a newspaper publication. But the court went further, and that is actually the fundamental thing that I wanted the court to determine, to decide whether it is the National Assembly Service Commission that can fix the salaries and allowances or the revenue mobilization a commission and the court agreed that that is only body that is constitutionally empowered okay. and from now onwards they should be the one to fix their salaries and allowances okay. to, to reflect the economic reality of the country all, all right uh barista Obani. and just you know to put this in context sheikh Hussani had said that you know these lawmakers get uh, all, all over 13 million naira monthly now usually these lawmakers often refer us journalists to the revenue mobilization and allocation um commission uh, you know whenever we ask so do you really think anything has changed with this judgment yes what we'll, what what has actually changed is that from now onwards uh, we will go to the uh to the whole, and we'll go the entire hub to ensure that we get to the root of this particular case. We we'll want the Attorney General to get a copy of this judgment. We we'll want the Accountant General to get a copy of this judgment. I will mm -hmm. ensure that. We we'll want the Minister of Finance to get uh, a copy of this judgment. Also, we want the agency that is in charge, the Revenue Mobilization Commission, to get a copy of this judgment. 
we will insist that they will give us their schedule of what the National Assembly members are supposed to be earning in a year. I mean, including their salaries and allowances. We'll okay. go to that extent. And any breach, we are going back to the court to uh, commence content proceedings. Now that the court has made a pronouncement that they are the only one that ought to, and they denied in, their, in the newspaper report, I'm talking about the revenue mobilization, denied that they were not the one responsible for those bogus salaries and allowances. Now they denied it, and the House of Members also came to their lawyers to deny that they, that they are not receiving those amounts that were alleged. We will now insist for the proper thing to be done. How much are they receiving? How much are they supposed to receive? Mm -hmm. And how much is being paid? So in case of any breach, we will now raise alarm to the members of the general public so that we can begin to take action. That is the starting point. We must begin to insist on things being done properly in this country. We have started with National Assembly members. We we'll go over to the ministers. We we'll go over to other, other public office holders to ensure that we bring sanity using the instrumentality of law uh, for, for, for us as, uh, as public interest uh, lawyers. Okay, so you're basically saying that, you know, if the lawmakers do not comply, you know, these are the modalities, you know, for the RMAFC to, to obey the judgment. Yes, we are, we are going to follow them to, to, to the conclusion. We are going to be religious uh, follow-up to ensure that there is compliance because we ask them to now give us what they prepare every year that this report should be earning. So if there is any deviation, then we will now know how to handle it. Now, remember that the judge said, that the National Assembly members came to court through their lawyers to say that these amounts of money we alleged are not being earned, earned by them. But that it is found out, if it is found out that they are earning these amounts, these bogus amounts, then the EFCC and other security agencies should step in in order to investigate okay. and pursue them. That is what that judgment also said. Because the allegation of 13 million per month, they denied it. And the court said they will not rely on newspaper publication in order to ask for a fund or even to hold it against them since they deny. But if it is found out that there is truth in that allegation that this is what they receive. And I think that even Sunny was lied because they received more than what Sunny even said. Mm -hmm. When Senate President, uh, uh, this man was there, the Senate President doing President Jonathan's period, the, this, the, the Senate President was almost feeding the entire village every day. That, you know, I mean, the kind of money these guys collect every month was more than 30 or 40 million in a, in a, in a month. As, as, as salaries and allowances. So he was only being circumspect by saying 13 million. That 13 million is uh, you know, less than what they, uh, they collect every month. The okay. truth is that nobody has agreed to review what, what they are receiving every month as salaries and allowances until Sunny came to give that small figure. But despite all that, they denied not, not receiving those amounts. So the court is now saying if it is found out that they are receiving these amounts, then EFCC should step in in order to investigate them. All right, Bani Salbani, last question for me. If there's no reduction, you know, which I believe is your aim, what next? Are you going back to the court or, or maybe the streets this time around for mass action? I think I have to go back to the court. Let, let, I want to use the instrumentality of law and the judiciary to, you know, for us to be on the part of uh, sanity in this nation. I mean, that was the, the part that uh, Ghani laid for some of us who believe in his philosophy. We cannot be carrying matches and bows and, and all that and be on the street all the time risking our lives. We can only do it through the instrumentality of law by going to court to insist that this particular country must be well ruled. And, and, and the good news is that the Supreme Court of Nigeria, in a recent case of NNPC versus uh, oil pollution as an NGO that went to court, has now thrown open the, the gate for public interest litigators. So far, you're a taxpayer and you are a citizen of this country, and you insist that things be done properly, especially on the issue of observance of our rule of law and law, you can come to court, and the court will not in any way exclude you on grounds of local standards. So the court has thrown it open, the Supreme Court, in a very fundamental judgment that is now known as a locus classicus, that every public interest litigator must begin to use now to so that it cannot be denied of, of, of having access to judiciary as a result of issue of locus. So you, we can go to court now and ask that proper things be done, including issue of uh, bogus salaries and allowances by okay. public office holders. All right. Thank you very much, Barista Wani Ubani, for your time on the news. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.